I just had any uh, Cowboys on Thanksgiving. Shouts out to everybody, man. I'm sorry I wasn't able to stream any day but Sunday. Was with family Thursday. Was still with family on Friday. I did a quick little almost three hour stream on Sunday to make it up for y'all. And then my birthday was yesterday, so I was just chilling. But now I'm back, right back into the full swing of things. Regular scheduled programming. I mean, at least on my end. Now, you gotta blame the Steelers for why we're playing Monday in Arizona. <laughs> but I'm back. I'm back with the videos and all of the regular live streams Friday, all of that. And yeah, man, I had to do a crazy stats part two because this one is even crazier than the last one and far more positive. And diving into some of these stats made me want to do a, another video on some of the great free agency signings that Ron Rivera had this past offseason when he first got here. But let's get to the stats video. Let's get straight to it. Let's get it. All right, so you already know we got to start with the man himself, Terry McLaurin now. Right now, he is top five in reception yards. He is first in percentage team reception yards. He's first in percentage team offense. He's first in yards after catch and yards after contact. And he's tied for second in the NFL with Tyreek Hill behind only Justin Jefferson for big plays, which are plays over 20 yards with 16. And after Thursday's game, before everybody played Sunday and Monday, he was the league's leader in reception yards with 963, but then everybody else played. Now he's in fifth place behind DK Metcalf in first with 1,039, playing with a Hall of Fame quarterback. Tyreek Hill, second place, 1,021, playing with a Hall of Fame quarterback. Travis Kelsey, third, playing with the same Hall of Fame quarterback with 978. D-Hop, playing with a potential Hall of Fame quarterback. And Terry McLaurin out here just struggling in fifth place behind D-Hop only four yards. Bro, he's missed the do the most with the least, man. I hate the fact that people are comparing DK to Megatron. Like, Terry wouldn't be Jerry Rice if he had two Hall of Fame quarterbacks, or at least the one Hall of Fame quarterback that DK Metcalf has. And I know Megatron's just looking around like, hey, I'll even take Alex Smith. But still, we need to put some respect on Terry McLaurin's name. I still personally feel like Terry McLaurin is better than DK Metcalf. He just has a better quarterback situation. Much better quarterback situation. And better threats around him so that DK Metcalf is usually single covered. Whereas Terry McLaurin, they double cover him sometimes because it's like, who else are we going to throw to? Because I don't know what's happened to Cam Sims the past few games, but... He seems to have disappeared right back to where he was. But I want to talk about some of the historical things that Terry McLaurin has done. First of all, through 24 career games, Terry McLaurin has more yards than Jerry Rice did through his first 24 career games. Terry McLaurin is 1,790. Jerry Rice has 1,700. 57 and that's the 12th most yards all time through 24 career games that terry mclaurin is doing also in burgundy and gold history terry mclaurin has the most receptions through his first 24 games in burgundy and gold history with 120 and it's crazy because it still seems like they need to give him the ball more there's so many plays he's open that we end up checking it down to jd mckissick for no reason or throwing it to somebody else for no reason also Terry McLaurin, who had 826 yards in his career so far at halftime against the Cowboys, just halftime, joined Charlie Brown, who had 1975 as the only burgundy and gold player since the 1970 merger with 1,800 plus reception yards in their first 25 career games. And the sad news is that outside of Terry McLaurin, the top two receivers in that Dallas game, that domination was Dontrell Inman with one catch 15 yards and Steven Sims one catch eight yards. That is terrible. That is absolutely unacceptable. The fact that Terry McLaurin is out here doing all of this while there's almost always safety help behind to make sure that he can't break free and there's still a lot of plays where he's open and doesn't get the ball for some reason. And he's doing that with the other receivers on the team having one catch for 15 yards, another one for one catch and eight yards. It was basically just Logan Thomas and the running backs that were giving Terry McLaurin help and not the receivers at all. Terry McLaurin is going to be something special, man. We need to get that man a true Hall of Fame potential quarterback so we can truly get the most out of him and he can get all of that praise that DK is getting. Just imagine if Terry McLaurin had a quarterback at least comparable to Russell Wilson. His stats would be even better. Remember, Terry McLaurin is leading the league in yards after catch 
even though he has less reception yards than DK. So he's doing the most with the least. Now we got to move on to Antonio Gibson. And you already know my boy. He's from 30 minutes outside of Atlanta. So you know I got to rock with him the heaviest. And he had a huge game against Dallas. Oh, we got to talk about it. All right, so first of all, on Wikipedia for a short amount of time before Wikipedia fixed it, it said that Antonio Gibson was the American football running back for the Washington football team and the owner of the Dallas Cowboys. But they fixed it. <laughs> and it's a very interesting conversation because it's like, is Antonio Gibson only behind Justin Herbert and Chase Claypool in the Offensive Rookie of the Year candidates? And if he continues his trajectory and plays as well as he's been playing and just getting better and better, he could easily surpass Chase Claypool, and then we'll have to talk about Justin Herbert. You never know, man. He might be able to get that offensive rookie of the year if he plays like how he played against Dallas for the rest of the season. But it's time to get to the stats. First of all, Antonio Gibson ranks third in broken tackles per attempt with 7.9. And that was before the game against Dallas. Antonio Gibson versus the Cowboys, 25 touches, 136 total yards, three touchdowns, and 36.6 PPR fantasy points balled out had himself a day and of course according to pro football focus he is the highest graded rookie running back by a decent margin too with a 78.1 grade James Robinson is second with a 75.6 and then you have Clyde edwards Laird, then Jonathan Taylor, then DeAndre Swift. Now some historical facts. Antonio Gibson is the first rookie to score three touchdowns in a game on Thanksgiving since Randy Moss in 1998. Special, man. And he's starting to look like the cowboy killer. I mean, it's the argument between Santana Moss and Antonio Gibson now. Because in his two games against Dallas this season, he's put up over 200 total yards and four touchdowns. Also, before Derrick Henry played, he was only behind Kyler Murray for most rushing touchdowns of 10 plus yards with four, Kyler Murray had five. But that was before the Sunday games and Derrick Henry, I, I love him mercy. Same thing, before the Sunday games, after our game against Dallas, Antonio Gibson was tied with Kyler Murray for the second most rushing touchdowns total this season with 10. Oh, now he's third. Kyler Murray moved to fourth, Derrick Henry is second, Dalvin Cook is first, but Antonio Gibson is third in the league in rushing touchdowns with 11. But the reason that he's starting to have a bigger impact in game, the reason he's starting to get a higher snap count, which allows him to be more productive, is because his pass protection has improved mightily. At first, he was terrible. He was unplayable on third downs. That's why J.D. McKissick will come in on third downs, because J.D. McKissick can pass protect pretty well. He's literally like a healthy Chris Thompson. Like, I mean, the exact almost same thing. But now, since Antonio Gibson has improved his pass blocking, which makes sense, I mean, because he came out of college as a wide receiver more than anything else, so he wasn't used to pass blocking. He just didn't do it much. So now that he's actually worked on it and improved on it, now he's on the field more, and now he's starting to put up bigger and better numbers because he's on the field more. He has more opportunities to do the special things that he does. And just to let y'all know, if Antonio Gibson can average 71 yards rushing through these last five weeks, he will surpass 1,000 rushing yards on the season as a rookie. And we got to make that happen. And just to let y'all know, Antonio Gibson is the only rookie in Burgundy and Gold history, the whole franchise, to have rushed for a TD in five straight games. He joins Nick Chubb, a Georgia Bulldog, Ty Gurley, a Georgia Bulldog, and Maurice Jones-Drew as the only NFL rookies to do so since 2000. So if you want a rookie running back, get you one that went to Georgia or one that's from Georgia at the very least, okay? Also, historically, Antonio Gibson is second in NFL history for most total touchdowns per game, minimum 10 games for each player. He's second with one, tied for second with Chase Claypool, who also has one. The only person above them is Hall of Famer Jim Brown with 1.07. Then you have Hall of Famer LaDainian Tomlinson with 0.95. And then, of course, Todd Gurley who also has 0.95. And again, you have to see what they do throughout their entire careers because it's hard to compare what they're doing in such a small sample size in their rookie season compared to what Jim Brown did his entire career. But we'll see. So far, Antonio Gibson is on the right path. He's on the right side of history. Also, Antonio Gibson is the first rookie since at least 1948 to have three rushing touchdowns in a Thanksgiving game. He joins DeMarco Murray 
Emmitt Smith, who did it twice, and Barry Sanders as the only NFL players to do so in the past 40 years. And lastly, Antonio Gibson has been nominated for FedEx Ground Player of the Week, so definitely make sure y'all go vote for him to win that, man. I don't know. I mean, Derrick Henry made a impelling case. We'll see. We still got to support our boy and go vote. Moving on to Chase Young. Yes, sir. Let's start with his personals. Chase Young set or tied a career best marks in several pass rush metrics in Washington's Thanksgiving Day win on the road in Dallas. He had five pressures, which is tied for the most that he's done so far in his short NFL career. He had a 16.1% pressure rate, which is his highest so far in his short career. And he had a 0.74 second get off, which is the quickest in his short NFL career. So that was his best game. He's only getting better and better each week. I can't imagine what he's going to look like next year and beyond. Oh my, he's only going to get better. And then we got to talk about how he compares against some of the greats that are currently in the NFL right now that are currently active. Chase Young's double team rate is just a tick behind the top pass rushers in the league. And he's only a rookie. Chase Young is doubled at a higher rate than TJ Watt. Jason Pierre-Paul and Demarcus Lawrence but he wins more often his win rate is higher than JJ Watt Khalil Mack and Cameron Jordan and so people don't worry about his sacks because he's having a strong impact in games but he hasn't necessarily been putting up strong sack numbers don't worry about it Chase Young has 3.5 sacks in his first nine NFL games. Bruce Smith did the same thing with 3.5 sacks in his first nine NFL career games. I hope Chase Young ends up doing the same thing with being the sack leader in NFL history. And just to take it back, just to compare him to Khalil Mack personally, Chase Young gets doubled just about the same amount as Khalil Mack, but wins more by an obvious amount. So that just lets you know how good Chase Young already is. And then Montez Sweat gets doubled more than Robert Quinn, but wins more than Robert Quinn. I mean, we truly have something special coming out of this Chase Young Montez Sweat combination. Gonna be the deadliest edge rusher duo in the NFL for years to come. And speaking of Montez Sweat, Pro Football Focus gave him the highest grade that he's ever achieved in his career for a single game. He had a 92.1 overall grade. He had a 91.7 pass rush grade and a 76.4 run defense grade. Balling, bruh. And these are the young guys, man. This is the young quarter we're building around. That's what's crazy. Just adding electric, mobile, strong arm quarterback, smart, technically refined, Super Bowl. Come on now. How not? Also, Montez Sweat was named a starting edge defender for the Pro Football Focus Team of the Week. So big praise to him. And that interception return for a touchdown that he caused himself was great. Staying with the defensive line, we have Jonathan Allen. He has the highest pro football focus grade of any interior defensive lineman in the entire NFL through these last four weeks with a 91.3. So that's just to let you know how much of an impact he's having. He may not be getting sacks, but it's similar to Chase Young where he's impacting the game even though he's not the one actually bringing the QB down most of the time. And even though he was looking like the odd man out for the majority of his career and the majority of this season, these last four games shows that we probably need to pay that man. Staying with the defensive line, Tim Settle out here balling. Tim Settle is on a team with five other first round picks around him and he has five sacks this year which is more than Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne combined. And just to wrap up the defensive line, the only two teams with four defensive linemen ranked in top 20 of their respective positions, at least four of them, are us and the Steelers. So this is going to be a crazy defensive line game once we're finally able to play it. We're the only two teams that have four defensive linemen all ranked within the top 20 of their respective positions. Now we got to show Cole Holcomb some love. Staying on the defense. Against Dallas, he had his highest graded pro football focus game with an 86.2 grade and he's had his two best games of the season of his career against dallas this season so he might be the defensive dallas killer and his 76.8 overall grade for the season is the 10th highest in the nfl and the highest among all second year linebackers but it's the 10th highest out of all linebackers in the nfl like all of them so big shouts out to Cole Holcomb for being a silent killer. We haven't heard his name mentioned much, but he's had a huge impact. And then also big shouts out to Ronald Darby, standing on the defensive side of the ball. Before we get to like the overall crazy team stats and randomness, we're going to leave the players. First of all, it's a little late, but got to shout him out for that Bengals game. 13 targets, 5 receptions, 
four pass breakups with an 88.6 coverage grade, which was fourth that week out of all corners. Like, come on now. And again, before the Dallas game, after the Bengals, Ronald Darby had the fifth best pro football focus grade amongst all cornerbacks in the league. Great signing. After finding that out, and like truly paying attention to what he's been doing on the field, that gave me the idea to do the review on Ron Rivera signings. That's gonna be a video that comes out a little later. And now we're on to the random section, and some of these stats are crazy. Starting off with viewership. The Thanksgiving Day game between Washington and Dallas on Fox had 30.333 million viewers, which is the most viewed game in the NFL this season. So more people watched us dominate Dallas than any other game this NFL season between any two teams. And the game logged 562,623 viewers on an average minute basis. And that's the highest number of streams for any Fox Thanksgiving game in NFL history. So that was a record setting watched butt whipping. Also, this is the first time that Washington has ever beaten Dallas by double digits twice in one season. Also, this is the sixth time Washington football team has swept Dallas since 1960. We did it in 84, 87, 95, 05, the 2012 season with RG3, and now this year, 2020. And then here are the NFL tiers if you're curious. The Y axis is defense, the X axis is offense. So it basically shows that we're pretty below average offense wise, even with Terry McLaurin and Antonio Gibson. So that's just crazy. But our defense is literally up there with the best. I mean, we're slightly above the Dolphins, Ravens, we're right there with the Buccaneers and Saints, and only the Steelers and the Rams are clearly above us as far as defensive efficiency goes. Now, offensive efficiency, there's only, <laughs> it's really just the NFC East behind us, the Bears, the Broncos, and the Jets. That's literally it. So that just tells you how bad our offense has been and how much that needs to improve for us to be ready to win Super Bowls. I'm telling you, our quarterback is the key, man. And Scott Turner becoming a more consistent play caller and getting a wide receiver too for Terry McLaurin and hopefully a better tight end so Logan Thomas can be in high end tight end two. I think Logan Thomas is a decent tight end one, but I would love him to be our tight end too. All right, something random. Alex Smith is 8-5 and five as a starting QB for the Burgundy and Gold. Every other starting QB since he's joined the team in 2018 has gone 6-25. and 25. So, I mean, at the very least, Alex Smith does win you regular season games. And again, Alex Smith is 8-5 and five in his career as a Washington starter. And since Joe Gibbs retired in 2008, Smith is the only Washington QB who has a winning record. That is terrible. But at the same time, in that 41 to 16 win, I'm not sure if people noticed, but Alex Smith only had 149 yards throwing, one touchdown, and an interception. But our team was just so dominant, we outcoached the Cowboys dramatically. That's how we ended up dominating them. But still, shouts out to Alex Smith for being a really good game manager. He doesn't lose you games. He's gonna play this even middle, and it's up to the rest of the team to play well enough to win the game or play poorly enough to lose the game, generally. Now the offensive line, for the Bengals game, just taking it back a little bit, the offensive line as a whole had a grade of 91.1 that week. 15 points higher than any other team in the NFL. It wasn't even close. And every starter on the offensive line finished at sixth or better at their position in the pro football focus grade that week. I'm telling y'all, our offensive line is actually pretty good. You saw they performed against the Cowboys. I mean, against the Bengals, Wes Schweitzer, Another reason why I need to do a Ron Rivera free agent review, the fact that we have him for so cheap for three years and he could potentially be our starting left guard on a top 10 offensive line is crazy. Wes Schweitzer finished with a 93.7 overall grade, the highest of his career by far against the Bengals. Brandon Sheriff finished with a 90.8 overall grade. And those were the two highest grades of any offensive lineman in week 11 when we played the Bengals. They were literally the top two offensive linemen, both of them, just sitting at the top by themselves. Also, in very random news, the Rams versus Bucks game had the first all-black officiating crew in NFL history, so shouts out to that. And lastly, the last thing I wanted to tell y'all is that Mike McCarthy is on contract for the next five years for $30 million. And we saw how long it took Dallas to finally get rid of Jason Garrett, who now they wish they had back. So expect Mike McCarthy with his terrible coaching with the fake punts and all of that stupidity to be the Cowboys head coach for at least the next four years. Let's go. 
But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Just wanted to give y'all some of the crazy stats and grades and rankings that players on this team have been producing since the last time I did the crazy stats video. I'm going to definitely end up doing another one in a few games if we have some really good or really bad stats. Any stats that just stand out that are just crazy. Again, it doesn't necessarily have to be good. If it's bad, good, whichever one, I'm going to report it. So definitely be on the lookout for that. I'm also going to do a free agency review for Ron Rivera's first free agency here because guys like Wes Schweitzer, Ronald Darby, J.D. McKissick, Cornelius Lucas look like crazy signings. Technically can't forget Fuller also. And there's even more than that, man. This was supposed to be a developmental season, and it's looking like we are truly developing a lot of these guys out here. But again, I'm going to go deeper into that in another video, breaking it down by each free agency signing, how much money they're making, how long we have them on contract, and how well they've played this season. Especially in comparison to how well they played for their other teams before they got to us. So we can truly see how much this team is developing these guys. But yeah, man, I appreciate the view. Please like the video if you liked it, if you learned anything. With all of these stats, you had to learn something because I learned a whole lot of something before I made the video. So, man, you got to get a like for that. And then definitely subscribe if you haven't. Hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification every time I release a video like this. Every time I schedule a live stream. Every time I start up a live stream. Y'all already know I'm spamming y'all with videos and live streams throughout the week, every week. And as always, man, big shouts out to all of my people that donate to the channel. All of my sponsors, especially my Pro Bowl sponsors whose names you see scrolling on the screen right now. Big shouts out to my one all pro sponsor and Troy Cobb. But that man, I really appreciate everybody that gives to the channel, man. Y'all are helping making my dream come true. I'm gonna keep giving y'all content. I'm gonna keep giving y'all me and all of my personality, all of my honest, real, uncut takes. And I'm gonna catch y'all later, man. I wanted to come out with this video yesterday, but again, it was my birthday. I was chilling, but now I'm right back on it, man. I'll catch y'all later. I'm out.